All right, so Arjun, uh, let's we are on the Zbytes, uh, you know, login page now. So if you could please help us and you know all the people who are watching us, uh, to, uh just take us through the tab that you have built using Zbytes Dplat. So that would be great. Let's let's deep dive into it now. Sure. Uh, so I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay, yeah. right. So, uh, you know, we are at the we are at the Zbyte Dplat uh, web page. So now I'll just continue to sign in. You know, I'll just quickly go through the sign. I have, so I have linked it with my Google, and I find it to be really convenient. It doesn't really it it's so quick. So this is a greeting card app. that me and a couple of other people had made and uh, so it's for the ones who have not uh, seen uh, the dashboard as of now so it's see by its dashboard and there are like multiple tabs that you know ajun has tried and tried creating it so this is like one of the tab that he has built which is named greeting card app right so now please go ahead ajun yeah right so you know before actually showing you the edit edited version let me just show you the application itself so you know like all of you saw i deployed the application and because it is already deployed it got deploy redeployed so quickly so essentially let me just quickly go through what the application does so essentially this is like a greeting card application that randomly generates your greeting card and it mints it and it mints it as an nft and you can share it to other people and other people can receive it as an nft and you know it's just essentially uh block tokenizing greeting cards and it actually gives a great way of sharing greeting cards and making new ones so without further ado let's just let's just go inside so you know when when you press this button you get, you get brought to this page so uh, essentially now what we do is we you know ask them for a pic, for a prompt for a picture so this essentially is connected to the open api open ai endpoint and what happens is that you know it uses ai generation to generate an image so let's say uh, i want an image of a pizza for for now let's say i want an image of a pizza because i want to mint an nft that has a pizza on, on it so um, just give it a second and you know we've got our pizza going on here it's a pizza image mean, looks looks really good so essentially now what is happening that this is a unique ai generated image and i yeah. can essentially mint it as an nft so uh, you know going through functionality i think it would be better if i go to the editor and you know maybe show you a little bit of the functionality there as well uh, but essentially in short uh, you can mint an nft from here uh, then you can accept an nft from here you know you get uh, when when somebody shares you a link you get a nft or that you can you know actually see and then you can claim it so the point of yeah. this is that if i want to send an nft to somebody i wouldn't have to know their wallet address or i wouldn't have to know their details i can just like mint an nft make a shareable link of it and email it to them so if you have a wallet but i i don't want i don't know your wallet address or anything it it doesn't matter you can come to this page the link will all automatically bring you to this page and then you can claim that nft here and in, on this page you can like share your nft so like we have already like generated an image so this is ready to be shared like it's not yet minted but after that it will be ready to be shared from here right uh and this shows you essentially your collection and all what is what all have you minted so now let's go to the editing pa part so yeah. uh there are some things i really want to point out so we have we have a lot of pages here and you know the first page is a home page so you know we can just it's a normal navigation page that we navigate with so now here from technology standpoint of view what essentially we have done is that we have a jar we have these api set up one of them is an image generator one of them is a prompt generator so the way we work around it is that we use open ai as two endpoints one of them we used to use for actual image generation and one of them mm. we used to expand our prompts so like you saw i typed pizza in the previous example and essentially if i put pizza in image generator the picture quality might not the picture might not be that you know descriptive or it might not be that good mm -hmm. so what prompt generator does it it puts that pizza in one of other open ai endpoints and we get a we get a lot of details like we get a lot of details as to what it is so like let's say if i do a pizza i, I just put a pizza here and go here in the mm -hmm. prompt generator and uh, see so like your we see on the text in the api response this is an amazing thing about um 
uh, about the application is that you know i can actually send and receive api directly from here i don't need postman to test it i can just test it from here as well uh, so as you can see it gives us a description we have just written pizza what is a pizza dough tomato sauce cheese pepperoni mushrooms olive so it makes sure that all of these things are included in the picture so uh, so this is this is an amazing thing that is already there like it is implemented api handling is absolutely easy in this platform one of them so essentially the next thing on this page is we have this javascript we have this javascript object that we have written and you know it has a lot of different functionality so like there's a mint nft it you know takes all the data that we are minting and then you know converts it into a json string and then puts it in the blockchain so yeah. all this stuff and also one more thing i would like to say is that you know obviously uh, this application like it allows you to store all your data on an ipfs so ipfs is like really really nice because now everything is web3 about the application the platform as well so why not yeah. why not the data storage be web3 as well so uh, essentially how ipfs works is that we have this file picker here where we can upload files and mm. essentially what is what it does is we also have a javascript object and we also have a, a upload nft like we have a data uh, we have a data data source for ipfs and essentially mm. we are uploading the file and it's returning an as an id and we are essentially parsing that id and putting it in a blockchain so in Got terms it. of data sources we have a lot of data sources here so like so one another big thing about this application is that now we have the functionality to have a lot to have multiple smart contracts so you know most complex application have a lot of smart contract like one is for maybe for mint, minting or handling minting stuff one one smart contract is for you know publishing stuff or one smart contract is for sharing stuff so it makes yeah. a lot of difference having so many different uh, you know uh, applications here and there so right yeah. now we can see so right now we can see that you know we have nft marketplace advanced data source it's a marketplace data source where you know we can approve nfts and put them there so that we can make a shareable link out of them and then this mm -hmm. is a simple nft data source that is already available these all these data sources are already available at uh, on dplat so that is also really good like i didn't have to write all of these data sources myself so uh so this is really good and then we have our ipfs here as well and also another thing that i've done is you know for quick data retrieval we have also stored some of the parts in mongodb so for mongodb we have a lot of like uh, like we have a get data and we have a put data uh, functions sm small functions that do basic stuff like getting and fetching and putting data putting queries mm -hmm. across mongodb and even that is really easy like all we have to do is essentially just put in our mongodb uh, authentication string or you know we can just set up manual authentication and it really works and you know the uh, for mongodb we actually can even test the database so uh, that's i think really nice so essentially what this application i really liked something about this application was that uh i so normally when i'm when i'm dealing with apis let's say uh, i will have to use postman to verify my apis on this application i can just verify them here itself for mongodb as well i i will have to use different softwares to verify it so for here i can verify mongodb data sources as well so uh, this was like the first page i have a, i have a little bit of notes here i would like to read from so uh, yeah. the features so another thing which i wanted to point out was documentation so the thing about this application is that the documentations are like really good so so like if i if i uh, you know just a second please um, if i go here and let's say if i do like docs um, docs does sorry yeah so if i do like docs.zbyte.io i get a mm -hmm. lot of documentation here and i the thing that i like about the documentation is that it's like really detailed so even even it has like for smart contracts as well it has a lot of documentation you know that i can actually see you know what is happening what is not happening there's a yeah. temp, there's templates as well there's widgets as well for every widget you have a lot of documentation as well so the documentation was really helpful you know i was a beginner to this application and for me the learning curve was it was super easy the documentation so uh, with the documentation is it like was it helpful is there any place where you while making this tab you got stuck somewhere maybe and 
and you know that part was solved with documentation was it, uh, was there any point yes absolutely so when i when i obviously when i started to working with this application i didn't know a lot of things like uh, ipfs for example ipfs i was not sure how to actually like implement it and uh, you know there were documentations regarding it there were documentations regarding uh, implementation of mongodb as well so that actually helped me like it really helped me and uh, actually it was, it's it's a really simple process you know you have to there are actually a lot of things that they have put in so it actually helped me so documentation was pretty useful and i really like the language the documentation is written in so that also helps so uh, even a non developer uh, can that person can can make a dap is it possible with the documentation available arjun ah uh, yes absolutely i feel like uh, for a simple dap it's really possible for a extremely non developer like somebody who has minimal knowledge of development to make an application and for moderately heavier dapps i feel like basic just you just require a little bit of basic javascript knowledge maybe because smart contracts are there the smart contracts marketplace is just going growing it, mm-hmm. and keep on growing there will be new smart contracts added so uh, yeah. just uh, like as you can only see it manually uh like your in my javascript objects there is li- barely any any amount of code like as you can see that there is barely like 44 lines of code just to mint the nft so mm. this is this is such a small thing like it's it's and all of this is really basic like all i'm doing is calling the functions here so somebody who really wants to make even a complex application they just need a minimal amount of knowledge they don't need to be really good at javascript or html or css or react for the matter of fact like it is all there and it is all very easy to use okay okay all right So now let's move to uh, the smart contracts and uh, uh, post that. Let's let's move on to uh, the deployment as well. Right. So the smart contracts. So this application had a smart contract which was uh, which was already there on the marketplace, and there are also other applications you know in which I have had put my own smart contract as well. so the smart contract process is actually really easy like you have to write a smart contract in solidity that you normally do and then it gets like it gets added onto the marketplace and you can just it's ready to be deployed at that moment of time as well and the thing mm-hmm. is that uh, like let's say let's for for just just for demonstration purposes uh, if i if i go to like a simple nf if i go here on the simple nft smart contract and i do a new query here so you know i get an option to you know uh just just you know quickly edit everything here so um, like here i can see all the functions that my smart contract uses so you know there's balance burn amounts get approved so essentially what the application is really good at mapping all the functions from the smart contract to the user interface and it's really good like uh let's say uh if i have something like mint let's say so it al- always it shows me you know that you know it's a string required it shows me an exp- expected structure and it actually even d- it evaluates value for me so if i have something in the input variable and i am typing something so it will automatically like evaluate like what that value is and it will just cross check if the value is the same as not so this is really easy and as for the deployment i felt that like the deployment was really easy uh, so the way you would deploy anything is uh, so if i just go here quickly if i add uh, any of any data source let's say i add carbon tracking data source over here and now if i go to deploy um just a second so if i if i add some some function let's say sc function 1 and uh, um let's say here i do something like uh, just i spoke put a mock value here right so now if i deploy it it asks me that you know if i want to deploy this application you know de- deploy this smart contract and you know yeah. your i can use polygon or avalanche blockchain and you know i've got this test net here for time being because i am in the test environment but obviously there's main net also here so you know it yeah. really so if you realize deploying a smart contract is so easy i just have to click one button here and one button here and it will automatically so so my zbytes wallet is already connected to this so it automatically takes all of it into consideration and it becomes really easy for me so like as you can see okay. i have a lot of smart contract history here 
So deployment is extremely easy. I don't have to manually deploy anything. Uh, the application does it for me. So did you try, uh, uh, you know, deploying it on multi-chain? Yes, I tried deploying it on multiple chains. So even that is really easy. Like it's really easy. Can you, can you just, show like, that? Can you show that? Like uh, if we deploy it, like we, we chose Avalanche uh, as of now. So if we use like say Polygon. So right? let's say so if then, we do like a Polygon here and... Hmm. Um, okay, so I am I'm, I haven't looked into the carbon tracking this yet, but let's say uh, smart, let's just do something like a current date and all. So, so as you can see, it is being deployed, and okay. you know it's asking me for the deployment phase. So you know for the sake of time, let's just reject it now. But once I approve yeah. it, it gets deployed there as well. That's how I think we can really revolutionize and use the uh, power of Web three leverage. And uh, the, you know the real power of uh, the three as a whole, right? So thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank and you for this having was me. Amazing and keep building, uh, you know, some phenomenal apps, right? Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for having me, and all the best to everybody watching this as well. I hope you make really good apps and all. <laughs> thank you.